In today's episode, License email mailboxes of all former employees? I don't recommend it but okay. Only take breaks when I tell you to. Sure, no problem. When retail customers feel entitled to extra discounts for no reason, so you give it to M. So let's get started. License email mailboxes of all former employees? I don't recommend it but okay. Name clarity. Batted director equals IT director, dental commander, IT commando, computer commander, IT Joe, IT boy, hacker god, hacker dude and IT B.O.B., these were all real nicknames we gave to that guy as we dealt with his antics. Sorry if confusing but personally my favorite part of dealing with him. Everyone else, as named. A few years ago at my previous job, I was a senior technician at a managed service provider of IT services. We were a small company and were often yes men to just about anybody who would offer us money in exchange to their requests. The owner of our company would not push back against those that made crazy demands, overly cheap or even overly disrespectful clients. This led to us oftentimes doing tasks out of our normal scope, at cost, and a lot of times being cussed for no good reason. Our primary services included on-site service and support and cloud hosting of in-house and third-party solutions. One of which was Microsoft 365, Microsoft 345, which obviously is very commonly used for email services. We would keep living knowledge base pages on each company, their services, environment info, and even policies of which different companies may demand, like, only follow through with support requests from office managers, or if admin access is needed for this particular cluster of servers, contact Jim. One of our clients was a dental company that was of decent size. They had about 10 locations and were growing. Customers loved them, and we often took pleasure going on-site, as it was heaven dealing with such polite people in contrast to what we had to deal with most of the time otherwise. They would even demand us have some lunch if we happened to be on-site during their Friday luncheon. It was great. They used 365 services, and only used E3 licensing for their users which was total overkill $20 per user per month when most employees barely even checked email, let alone made an Excel doc. They wouldn't take our recommendation to go use the essentials at $5 per user instead unless it was an office manager or HQ worker. Also, they had a decently high turnover rate as it was a college-type town, and a lot of students would work there in one of the various positions to make decent pay and good experience while attending school. They would come and go. The IT director, literally only a title anyone can wear nowadays. He was pretty bad at his job, of this company called us one day cussing because there were a bunch of mailboxes that were not licensed. We tried to explain that these were mailboxes that we converted to shared of employees that had left. Doing so allows us to remove the license of the mailbox, while keeping all of the mail intact, and very easily accessible if we needed to delegate access to someone who needs to review. You basically get to archive the mailbox for free. He barely let us even speak and the tech who actually took the call was flustered so I took it over completely. Using my best well-seasoned customer service charm, I tried to explain to him the same, yet to no avail. They had 180-ish and used mailboxes that he wanted us to convert to a user box and add one of those premium I'm drinking Stella in a fancy glass licenses at $20 a pop per month. He resorted to personally insulting me telling me I'm a tech who got promoted too fast and I should try a four-year school next time and demanded it be done right away with no specifics on how it be done. Bless your heart man, okay, we'll do it. Luckily we record the calls. Also, I'll make note this company has a policy that we are not allowed to use PowerShell, which for those that don't know is a terminal that allows us to perform action by command line. We can write scripts for special tasks or even do things in bulk, saving lots of time. I knew this very well, and I begged them repeatedly to let us use PowerShell in the past to no avail. So we ordered pizza in the office and got to work. Converted every last mailbox to normal and licensed it. We even converted a spider into a god as he struck fear in us with his hairy legs and many eyes. We weren't worthy. 
After we finished we even had a contest to see who could frisbee off us 2003 discs the furthest, since we had a binder full of them, as well as few other goofy games for about a half hour before we dipped out. It was a fun late night at work in the end. A month or so rolls by and our accountant had sent out all of the invoices to our customers on that fine second Monday of the month. Our dental commander called us at 12.03 p.m., three minutes after he would have gotten his, and he had blown a head gasket. He finally saw the bill for the additional 180 E3 licenses. Plus taxes and fees. He was threatening to sue with me and my two co-workers if our owner didn't fix it. One thing about our pushover owner is that he didn't take kindly to someone insulting his workers directly as he took it personally since he interviewed everyone himself. He listened to the call recording after we begged him to do so. He did not like what he heard from IT Commando. He didn't give in and he even added a little razzle-dazzle that we had never seen before. He even noted that because it was a written policy that we can't use PowerShell, we should have billed the request as a project since they demanded it be done in such a short time and was not a normal support request. In order for us to remove the licenses they would also have to have this done at the same project rate, and they would have to pay for the bill as well as the two projects now, or we wouldn't touch it. Period. Our project rate was $125 an hour for junior techs, and $175 for senior techs. It was going to be about 2 hours per head all at the senior rate for each leg of the ordeal so about 12 hours all in all as there were 3 of us. Computer Commander didn't know that the owner of his company and ours we moderately close friends for nearly two decades, would occasionally play golf together and whatever company owners do when not at the office. The dental company owner and IT Joe came to our office immediately. Before allowing the discussion to proceed far past hello our company owner played both calls on full blast over one of those Logitech 2.1 systems. It was loud. Dental company owner was absolutely shocked at what was heard as this guy was always looked at in high standards. Hacker God was pale white as he sat there and did not move a muscle. He immediately told the IT boy to call an Uber back to the HQ and to stand by in the conference room, he wouldn't be driving back with him. He apologized profusely to us techs, nearly in tears it seemed. He wrote a check for one of the projects and the bill, we agreed to undo the work for free as he was a really good client of ours, and was always nice. He gave us each $100 Visa gift cards the next week, and bought us lunch in our own office a few times all out of his own pocket. Hacker Dude was fired as soon as the owner of the company got back to the office, and he entrusted us to make love to his IT systems while he found his replacement who was ultimately better in every way. They took every recommendation of ours including reducing the license types for the majority of their workers while confused as to why this was ever a debated topic. That is the one company I truly miss at my last job. A good client. Only take breaks when I tell you to. Sure, no problem. I used to work at a call center where we would get flooded with calls constantly. This is a story of how a busy body boss thought they understood everything since they were in charge. At the work we were given two 15-minute breaks and one 45-minute lunch break. The breaks were scheduled into our day so you could see when they would be, but this would change day by day. My role was a bit different than the normal agents as I was specifically dealing with the higher issue calls. These calls could take up to one hour to complete and the caller would need to stay on the line, unless they were fine with a call back later, but this was rarely the case. Since I never knew when I would be getting these calls, my break times were a shot in the dark if I would or wouldn't be on a call. I would just take them as soon as the call was done if they ever intersected, which they did 99% of the time. Enter my boss. During a performance review I hit all the marks except for attendance. I asked about this as I know I missed a few days, but always with a reasonable update for time frame and never had a no-show day, where there is no warning that I'm not coming in. My boss stated that attendance also applies to break and lunch times, and since I rarely took them at the requested time, I was getting written up. I explained my role that they hired me for and the challenges involved. They did not care and stated I needed to take breaks when I was told to. I asked for them to send me an email so that I could print it out, 
put it on my desk and never forget again. My boss smiled ear to ear, probably because they thought I was groveling at that point, and sure enough they did stating in the email you must take the year breaks only when the schedule tells you to, no time else. There is no excuse. I saved it, printed it out, sent a copy to my own email, and followed it to the letter. Next call that happened that same day of course, had the long call crossing over with a break issue. I asked the customer if it would be okay for a call back, they said no, I stated that unfortunately I cannot stay on the line as I am required to take my break. They became enraged and demanded to speak with my boss. I told my boss, they said that I need to apologize and finish the call. I showed them the email they just sent to me and said you told me to take my break at this time no matter what. I'm just doing what you told me to do. I'm taking my break, would you like the customer transferred over? Or should I just hang up? They took the call over and from that day on I never had a missed attendance mark. God busy body bosses are the worst. When retail customers feel entitled to extra discounts for no reason, so you give it to M. I worked at a pretty popular department store for years, and I have to say that the customers this store breeds are the worst of the worst. This store is probably 90% of the reason that so many customers feel as entitled as they do. The cashier had the hiccups, it was incredibly annoying, isn't there anything you can do for me? Was an actual honest to God complaint one lady had for me when I was a supervisor. So anyway, I was covering a breakup at the registers. I was a supervisor at the time and I had also already given my two weeks notice. I was beyond fed up. It was like spring of my senior year all over again. I had no more F asterisk CKs left. So I'm up at the registers, and this lady who couldn't have been more than 40 comes up with a huge cart full. Anyone who has worked retail, you know this woman. She's got the hair, she's smacking her gum at me while she talks on the phone, the entire transaction is delayed because I need her to pay, and she starts to ignore me because apparently I'm the rude one for interrupting her phone call. She proceeds to tell the person on the other end give me a second and finally turns to me and says, as if I'm an impatient child testing her last bit of patience, yes? Here's your total, ma'am. Do you have any coupons or rewards to use today? She nodded and here is when she drops a few clippings on the counter in front of me, ignoring my outstretched hand, and turns her attention back to her phone. As soon as I look at the coupons, I see that none of them are usable. She has one that is $10 off your menswear purchase of $50 or more. She has all women's clothing. The next coupon expired two months ago. Another one doesn't start for another week, etc etc. So I try again to get her attention. She's just as lovely and accommodating as the last time. She rolls her eyes, tells the person on the phone that she will have to call them back, and gives me another sharp yes. Sorry ma'am, this coupon is expired, this one hasn't started, and this one is only for when you purchase $50 worth of menswear. Do you have any other coupons or rewards? She stares at me like I had just called her mother some unsavory name. UH excuse me, what? What could I do but shrug helplessly? You have got to be kidding me. That is the entire reason I came out here today, to use those coupons. I really can't use them? Unbelievable. Some customer service here. All the while she's packing her useless coupons back into her purse and glaring scorch marks into my soul. Remember I said I was done? My patience before Shopzilla here was already at zero. She tipped the scales. I was officially in the negatives. I had negative F asterisk CKs and negative patience left. So when she said you should be ashamed of yourself, being so rude to a customer. Something in me snapped. I smiled sweetly at her, mustered up a bright and cheery expression that I usually reserve as my waitress face, and said I'm so sorry you feel that way, ma'am. But on the bright side, since it's Tuesday I can still apply your senior's discount. So at least you aren't losing that one, right? I can't quite describe her expression. I think she was angry, but I think she was more shocked. And in that state of shock, she sputtered out I'm not a senior. 
I mimicked her shock, trying to appear horrified by my accidental faux pas, and then immediately said let me take that off of there for you then. And promptly took the senior discount off, bumping her total up another $20. I'm so sorry for the misunderstanding, ma'am. Oh boy, she was pissed, but like I said, I think she was more shocked. She seemed a little dumbfounded, she paid, she took her stuff, she left. I will take that petty moment of satisfaction at her horrified expression to my grave. It was even worth the write-up that I did end up getting after she called the store and gave my manager a piece of her mind. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.